During the terrible winter of 1697, a plague fell on the people of St. Mary's County. Illness and death were everywhere. Men, women, children. No one was safe. Fear ruled. In desperation, people looked for something, someone to blame. It wasn't long before they turned their malice toward an elderly spinster who lived alone in a hut in the woods. Her strange customs had long upset residents of the county. It was rumored she caused crops to fail, illness, and even death. She was said to be a witch. Her name was Mal Dyer. Convinced that she caused the plague, on a bitterly cold night in February 1698, an angry group of ten men set out for Mal Dyer's hut, just south of today's Leonardtown. As they made their way through the woods, their anger grew. Reaching the hut, they flung torches into it, setting the flimsy structure ablaze. With only a smock and a loan, she ran in terror into the woods, fleeing the mob and the inferno. Her house and possessions were in flame. Maldire was gone. That was all that mattered to the mob. They were rid of her forever. Or so they thought. Several days had passed since that dreadful night. Then one afternoon, a young boy was out searching the woods for some stray cows. Looking into a shallow ravine, there, half buried in the snow, was a body. The right hand was laying on a rock. The boy ran to get help. Several men came out, but on seeing that it was Mal Dyer, none dared to come close. But they couldn't just leave her there. So three of the men picked up the frail, frozen figure, prying her hand loose, an imprint of a hand and fingers were on the rock. Was the handprint a curse? A curse by Mal Dyer, made in her dying moments a curse on the people who chased her from her home and who had caused her death, a curse that persists even to today. Maldire was dead, yet stories about her, the rock, and the handprint on it would not go away. Few dared to go near the place she had died. Crops in the area failed. People who approached the stone fell ill. Maldire had not gone away. Maldire's rock remained in place for centuries until in 1968, a curious newspaper reporter, Philip Love, decided to see if he could find it. I got a call from Woodrow Bennett, owner of a grocery store near the site of what was believed to have been Maul's hut. I've known about that rock for years, he told me. I can take you to it. Several days later, my wife and a couple of friends drove out to Maldire Road. We followed Bennett up a long, steep hill, stopping at the top of a ravine. There she is, he told us. There's not another one like it in the county. Bennett, Love, and the others clambered down to the rock. With some difficulty, they turned it over. Philip Love again. We rolled it far enough to reveal indentations in which a hand fitted perfectly. My wife snapped a photo, but the flash tube didn't fire. I then tried my camera, same result. My dyer has hexed your camera, said Bennett. She also hexed my sunglasses, my wife added. They fell off when I stepped on them. It wasn't until October of 1972 that the Maldire Rock was removed from the woods and placed at the old jail in Leonardtown, 
which at the time was the headquarters of the St. Mary's County Historical Society. Hello, I'm uh, Law First Lieutenant Lawrence Pilkerton with the Maryland Army National Guard, Company A, Lunnertown. I had just joined the unit. I had just put nine years in the Waldorf Guard, so I was handed a mission by Captain Blanchard at Lunnertown. He wanted me to uh, move the Moldau Rock from its present position to the Lunnertown Old Jail. And there were seven men assigned to me to help move the rock. So we got together and we had a 45 minute meeting of the minds to figure out what we wanted to do and how to do it. So after that, we got the equipment together and went to the scene to where the rock was located and proceeded to uh, clear where the rock was. We wrapped the rock in army canvas uh, had the truck pull it up to the edge of the uh, field at the farm. And then we uh, rigged a pulley and ramp and slid the rock and pulled the rock up onto the deuce and a half and secured it. And then we took the rock and the trucks to the old jail in Leonardtown. And we gently lowered the rock onto the ground. We rolled it I don't know, 10 or 15 feet into place, and we were happy with that. I had no difficulties at all. Things went according to plan. I was just the most nervous person in the world, knowing that I might get it to Town in two pieces. That was my main concern, and having to write a report about that. And uh, everything went according to plan. I was so happy. So if it needs to be moved again, do not call me. <laughs> <laughs> For 50 years, the Maldire Rock sat on the ground at Lenatown's old jail. Exposed to weather and tourists, Maldire's handprint gradually eroded. To preserve this piece of county history and its legend for future generations, the St. Mary's County Historical Society, with the help of the town of Leonardtown and St. Mary's County itself, moved the rock to Tudor Hall. Now, after all this time, Mal Dyer will be remembered and honored, moving her rock in a manner befitting the era in which she lived carried on a replica of a 17th century sledge pulled by four countians in period clothing, the rock made its way from the old jail past the county courthouse along historic Washington Street and Camellia Drive to Tudor Hall. Mary Dyer most likely learned about witchcraft, herbal remedies, spells, and so on, while indentured as a servant at the Nevis Plantation on St. Kitts in the West Indies. Bringing and practicing these skills in St. Mary's County undoubtedly led to her being labeled a witch, being poverty-stricken, living alone in a shack in the forest reinforced this view. The St. Mary's County Historical Society is keen to preserve the legend of Mal Dyer and the rock that bears her name and her curse.